This is the story of Sundiata, the Lion King of Mali. First, we must talk about how Sundiata came to be. King Manhan ruled over Mali with great power and grace, like a lion. One day, after many days of the countryside being attacked by buffalo, two hunters and a woman appeared before King Manhan. We have brought you the king of those daughter, Sogolong Keju. She is said to have harnessed the spirit of the buffalo to make her have a very strong and courageous soul. We offer to you in hopes that you will help us in the countryside, said the hunter. King Manhan's griot leant over and whispered in the king's ear, The spirit of the buffalo would make a great king once the boy comes of age. You should marry Sogolong to carry on your great kingdom. King Manhan married Sogolong and grew to love her. A year passed and Sagalon had a baby boy. The king and his newest wife were so pleased and the celebrations were held throughout the kingdom. Only one was not so happy. King Manhan's first wife, Sasamu Barete, who had given birth to a strong boy a few years ago, said to herself while looking at a newborn child and its mother, the king already has a perfectly good son that would be a great king one day. Why is there any need for another? As the next few weeks passed, it was discovered that although the new child, Sundiata, had the spirit of the buffalo, he could not walk or speak. What a helpless child! He will never rule over my son, Sasamu Barete exclaimed. The king in Sogolong did not give up on Sundiata, though. Over several years, they tried to heal him with potions and prayers, but nothing seemed to work. In this time, there was much encouragement from the king's griot to keep eating the child because he said he will blossom into a great leader, even if it is on his own time. King Manhan grew old and his time was coming to an end, so he gave Sundiata one last gift, a griot. The son of the king's griot, Belafeske, will be Sundiata's griot. Although Sundiata still could not walk, the king prepared him to rule his throne. Once Magnahan died, the council did not follow his wishes and allowed Sasmu's Barete's son to rule over the kingdom. Sundiata would not have this, and he asked Belafiske to get a long iron rod. With this iron rod, Sundiata hoisted himself up with all of his strength. Sundiata took a step and a crowd gathered all around as Belafeske screamed, Get out of the way! The lion is walking! Sasamu Barete was furious. She went to the nine witches in the forest and asked them to kill Sundiata. But the witches said, We need him to become angry or else our magic won't work on him. Sasamu Barete suggested that the witch the witches take Sundiata's mother's plants from her garden to make him very angry. The witches went to the garden and Sundiata helped them gather the plants. They could do no harm to him because he had no anger in his soul. Another attempt at Sundiata was at age 10, when Balafeske was sent to an evil land of Soso where the king Samaguru was feared for his evil magic and sorcery. The Soso king kept Belas for himself, leaving Sundiata with no guidance besides his mother. In fear for their lives, Sundiata and his mother left Mali in hopes to return one day to make things right. After seven years of exile, Sundiata and his mother found refuge in the city of Man. Mema. The king of Mema took Sundiata under his wing, for now he was strong in both mind and body. He taught Sundiata how to be a king, learning about war and government. As Sundiata and his now elderly mother were walking along the river, Niger, a messenger interrupted them with a loud, hurried words. 
Sam and Guru has invaded Mali, and you, the son of lion and buffalo, are the only one that can lead us and reclaim your throne. Our people have taken to fighting with Sam and Guru's army, but we are losing without a proper leader. You must return to Mali. Sandiata looked at his mother and said, I must go. His mother held his face in her old wrinkled hands and said, My only son, this day has been awaiting you for a long time. Go. Go save our people and be the buffalo and lion that your father and I dreamed of. With that, Sandiata left. As Sandiata rode with half of the king of M Mema's army beside him on horseback, armed with spears, he stopped at every village and city he had sought refuge while sought refuge in while exiled and gathered <clears throat> more and more warriors. City after city, a massive army had formed and the beating of the hooves could be heard from miles away. Fighting began at sunrise on the plain of Karina and continued all day long. Everyone was fighting each other, but Sandiata had his own mission, to find Samanguru. Sandiata galloped through the masses until Bala Feske appeared right beside him and said, I finally escaped after seven years of learning about Samanguru's weakness. If you shoot him with this arrow, Made out of white rooster, it will take his powers away. Sandiata took the arrow from his long lost friend and let it fly all the way through the dust and the storm right through the shoulder of Samanguru. Samanguru fled from the battlefield, still on his horse, and into the valley of Mount Kulikoro. Sandiata and um, Belafeske followed him into a deep cave. They heard a scream. And Samanguru was never seen again. Sandiata's army defeated Samanguru's army when they heard that their leader had fled the field and perished. It is said that Samanguru became part of that mountain because he was never seen again. Sandiata returned glory to Mali. Celebrations were held throughout the country. The kings that had lent their men to fight with Sandiata in battle, drove their spears into the ground, pledging their allegiance to the king forever. Sandiata spoke quietly, while Bella Feske could speak to what seemed like all of Mali. He said, Those who exiled me didn't see me fit for the throne because I was a crawling child, unable to speak. But Mali has suffered greatly in my absence. Now, as your king, I shall protect this country with the strength given to me by the lion and the buffalo. With that, King Sandiata ruled over Mali for many bright years.